Today we have a remarkable guest, Diana Patton, the visionary owner of Diana Patton Advanced Skincare and brilliant creator behind Linger Skincare. Join us as Diana shares her insight on balancing personal milestones while running a thriving business and her secrets for retaining clients while developing an extraordinary skincare line all at the same time. We also explore the craziness and dealing with Health Canada regulations, as well as growing and thriving a business. This is a conversation that entrepreneurs, especially women, won't want to miss. Let's dive in. All right. On today's episode, I'm really excited because I feel like you're, you've got both things that a lot of beauty entrepreneurs want in their life, a product line as well as a spa. Um, and I'm really interested to hear your story on how you got into the beauty industry as well as kind of how you got these two amazing beauty entrepreneur businesses together as one and your idea of like where you want to take it, some of the really um, amazing things you've done already in both your businesses. And I've been following you on Instagram for quite some time now, probably around since like COVID and just, just how positive you are within this space. And I'd love to uh, learn more about your story on how you got to where you are today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Nicole. I have to say that um, I was just over the moon to get the invitation to be on the podcast because I was already actively listening to your oh, podcast. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, so when you guys reached out for me to be a guest, I was so honored. So thank you Aww, for having me. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So I've been in the beauty industry for a solid 20 years. Um, which just feels crazy to say, like, I just can't believe where the time has gone. Mm -hmm. um, and in the 20 years, it really has been, you know, how there's all these conversations about like overnight success. And it's like these brands come out of nowhere because people just don't see that behind the scenes of the growth and the evolution of a brand and how it comes to be. Um, so I've always been interested in beauty since I was little, like I was mixing weird concoctions in the kitchen to make face masks when I was 10 years old, wanting to put them on my girlfriends at sleepovers. Like it started from a very young age. Um, but I actually studied music my whole life, which is like kind of like a little sidebar. Um, so I studied music all through my childhood, through college. I taught private music lessons, uh, voice and piano, and then all of a sudden I just decided I wanted to dip my toe into something else. And because beauty had always been such a hobby of mine, I thought, well, I'm going to go to aesthetic school. So I did. So I got my diploma in aesthetics and naturally that just pushed me into working into the spa scene, um, which I just... I highly encourage, like, I know there's all these new estheticians that are just so eager to go off on their own, but I highly encourage every new esthetician to work in a spa setting. I right? can like, agree more. <laughs> at least in the yes. beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you learn so much. That's where so much of your education actually happens as a lot of us estheticians know, like we go out into the world pretty green and it's not until we actually get in immersed in it all that we really start to learn all the tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked at a spa um, and then I actually was recruited to teach for um, some skincare companies. So I kind of dipped my toe into doing education. There was a lot of travel involved in that, which I thought was going to be all glamorous and wonderful but once you start doing it you realize traveling for work is not so much fun <laughs> yes yeah so I didn't do that for too too long and then that's when I decided to just go for it and open my own practice so being a licensed esthetician I was doing everything solo um manicures pedicures waxing you name it I was doing it and then um, fast forward, got married, had twin girls. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so went on a little bit of a mat leave there. Kept the business going though. I did hire somebody um, to run my business while I was on my mat leave with my twins. 
And that was great. Like she really did fill that gap for me enough to keep the business going because I didn't want to have to collapse the business for a year and then try to get it up and running again. I wanted to retain those clients. That is a Um, very uh, um, good, good conversation even within its own because I feel like as female dominant business owners, especially within the beauty industry, that is a lot of fears going into that, right? Like even for myself, I think of that all the time. I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm business, business, business. Then I've got to figure out my personal life. And that's definitely a conversation I've had more often than none with a lot of my, my friends who are also business entrepreneurs is what are we going to do when that stage of our personal lives happen? So that's really a good point of having that management, someone to go in and to run, run it for you. So you're still within still in the the control of the business but then seeing it flourish still without bringing it down as you're working on your your personal life absolutely and to be honest during my mat leave I personally wasn't making any money but I knew that the business was and I was retaining that clientele that I was going to eventually be coming back to Mm -hmm. Uh, or it was just kind of like keeping my eye on the prize, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I obviously had to pay overhead costs plus the girl who was working on my clients, right? So mm-hmm. there goes all the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's a lot of people don't see that, right? The mat leave cover like side of things. If you're it, it it's really hard. It's it's the being a business owner, especially a female business owner, that's a really hard topic sometimes for people to swallow too is is not paying yourself but you've got a business running yeah yeah it was a bit tricky to navigate but we got through it and um, and then when my girls were two years old I decided to niche into skincare um and it's so funny how doing stuff like that is so scary at the time right? Because I just had this huge manicure, pedicure, waxing clientele that had been with me all these years and so loyal and so faithful. Facial clients too, of course, but um, skincare had always been my passion. And it just seemed like a really good time to sink my teeth deeper into the skincare world and just go for it. So when they were about two years old, I actually um, did a lot of more education and um, took courses like medical esthetician courses and just really gained my knowledge in skincare um, and then completely converted um, my solo business over to facials only. So then I was just offering facials Um, and that was it just went so well, like the support from my clients because they've known me so long, too. So people who were originally having like manicures and pedicures were like well I'm never going to see you now now I have to start having facials I'm like well yeah yeah (laughs) that's the whole point (laughs) yeah so a lot of them just converted over to facial clients from manis and petties or whatever so it all worked out great and then what was really cool about niching and skincare is naturally product sales went up right? Because I just had honed in on that skincare. There's that repeat business of repurchasing face creams, facial cleansers, people get their ride or die products and can't live without them. And Mm -hmm. really great to have that, you know, that part of the the business income coming in too. And it really just took it to the next level for me. Are you like me and every other entrepreneur on this planet trying to make things as simple and easy as possible, even when it comes to your health? Goalie apple cider vinegar gummies can help. Use promo code NickMannion at checkout for 10% off your order. For those looking for a different take on apple cider vinegar, Goalie apple cider vinegar gummies contain all the old school benefits of traditional apple cider vinegar in an easy take gummy form. Their products are vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, and gelatin-free. Taste the apple, not so much the vinegar. Two gummies contain one apple cider vinegar shot. Now, don't forget to use promo code NickMannion at checkout for 10% off. So that's Diana Patton's advanced skincare. And then in uh, 2020. (laughs) Yes, of course, 2020. (laughs) um, There was another big shift, obviously, in my business when we were all sitting idle as service providers. And that's really when it was, oh my gosh, like, I mean, 
you know, we were all just feeling it. It's like, well, what do we do now? Like when your your whole business is providing service on humans, yeah. mm-hmm. right? That human touch, like even just that human interaction, I was like, what? I'm stuck at home. Like I can't even talk to somebody or touch touching. It feels so weird not being able to touch and like help somebody or like, you know, like that, yeah. that full interaction, not even just talking to someone, just like actually being able to help them with something. Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's what we do. Like we just, yeah, that's all part of it. So, um, however, I mean, over the time span of all of my years in, um, in aesthetics and the spa world, I mean, yes, I always kind of thought it would be so cool to have my own skincare line one day, but because I was just always so busy with clients and the babies and, you know, like it just was like, oh, I'll get to it one day, I'll get to it one day. And then when the world kind of shut down, it was kind of like this moment of, okay, well, let's do it. Now is the time. Yeah. My husband, like my husband really pushed me to do it because I was home with the babies and well, they weren't babies in 2020, but they were little, they were in grade one. And I was helping them a little bit with their school work, but he was like, you got to do something for you or you're going to go crazy. So um, originally I started um, the idea for, so my second business is Linger Skincare. Um, and I started this little notion because in the pandemic, it's funny how it all comes from this little seed that's planted in the pandemic. All of a sudden I was making hundreds of at-home facial kits for my clients. Oh my gosh. We did the same thing. That is so wild. Yeah. 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 Cause it's like, how do we pivot this? How do we make sure people are still, you know, having some kind of a treatment at home, you know, still wanting to purchase their products. And I I'll never forget like having these tables set up in my skincare clinic with all these little containers that I'm standing there like at 2 AM, right? Like squeezing all these products into all these little containers and then numbering them and writing out instructions for everyone. And it was you know, it was a labor of love doing this for my clients. And I just remember thinking the whole time I was doing that, this would be so cool if these products were mine, Mm -hmm. right? Because I was filling these little containers with another company's products. And I just thought, man, and that was kind of what lit that fire under me to start heavily researching labs and chemists and it all just kind of spiraled from there but I guess in a weird way I do have the pandemic to thank for sparking that Mm -hmm. within me yeah I always say it's usually there's a problem and then we figure out how to fix that problem and I feel like that's a prime example of that of yeah why can't these be my products and without giving yourself that limitation and like you said the timing just kind of worked out perfectly for you and like your husband was even saying like okay do this for you and and you're going to you're never going to regret it right like that's such an amazing yeah. story yeah so it just it it slowly evolved from there so um when i originally developed linger um it was in this umbrella of still I had it in my head of making these at home facial kits. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I want to develop products that are, um, you know, gentle, safe, easy to use for all ages, all skin types. Like I really just wanted to create like a very, um, I don't like to use the word basic because once you get into formulating things, you realize nothing is nothing. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, you know, just kind of like, um, essential for everyone, like essential some- for everyone yeah. that they can yeah. use at home. So that's kind of where our jumping off point was, um, in the lab with, with our chemists and, um, we developed, um, we developed linger. So there's a double cleansing system, which is out of this world. Amazing. It's our top seller. Um, and we have a serum, a hyaluronic acid serum, 
a couple of moisturizers, a facial mask, obviously, um, to do at home facials. And the whole line is very, um, I wanted it to be a very, like, you feel like you're having a spa treatment at home. Mm -hmm. That was really important to me too. So the products um, are very botanical, like have really, um, they're, they're all um, fragrance free, but they have essential oils in them. Amazing. So you do have a sensory experience when you're using them as well, which I think is why people reach for them too, right? Because they, they all smell delicious. They, oh, they yeah. really yeah. And usually you probably get this as well when you're in the treatment room and clients are like, oh, I love the smell of that product. That is like, I'm like, oh, yes. And I'm going to I'm going to retail this to you after like, absolutely, right. So they can take that delicious product home with them and enjoy it as well. That is like, I, I love when I go into a spa or like a treatment room or something. And that's like, I'm such like a scent person. And well, I, I used to actually have really bad allergies, so I could never appreciate smell because I couldn't smell anything for so long. But now it's like, oh my gosh, it's like my love language. As long as it's something that's like, like you said, not like a fragrance per se, like a perfume or something like that, but like a natural essential oil or something that can just be blended in there and be beneficial at the same time. As a busy entrepreneur, I know how important nutrition is for my brain health. I know how I need to be on all the time as well as my energy levels. Now, a lot of my energy also comes from my healthy gut, which is my nutrition and food. Now, good food, if you haven't heard of it, it's definitely a good idea. If you put in promo code Nicole3x2, you will get 40% off or more on your first order. Now, I'm just warning you, it's a little addicting. I definitely get it every single week and it has changed the way I am in the kitchen as well as my productivity and time management. No more going to the grocery store. I barely have to go. The only time I have to go is for the essentials like coffee creamer, coffee, or any of those type of little miscellaneous things I might need around the kitchen. But once again, we will put the show notes below for you to get your promo code through Nicole3x2. Happy shopping, everyone. That's amazing. And then where did the name come from? <laughs> I feel like Brett would kill me if I didn't give him credit. So oh, um, there you go. Also, um, which is so funny how conversations like that go to um, when we were brainstorming about the name. I wanted to really somehow envelop the process of what I had created into the name. So I started off chatting with my husband about, you know, like I want people to just like slow down and unwind and relax and hang out in their bathrooms for longer mm. than seconds, right? Um, Cause we're just all so busy all the time and rushing and, mm. you know, and, and I really just wanted a word that kind of enveloped that whole idea of being idle, sitting still, taking a moment for some self-care. And to be honest with you, it's so funny because I kept coming back. <laughs> I kept coming back to the word loiter, but Brett was like, that's an awful word. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, this is why you have to talk to people that like will honestly give you your, their opinion. <laughs> so much brainstorming and it's like, but I, I want a word like the word loiter, but a nicer word. And we slept on it for a few days. And then out of the blue, he was like, what about linger? And as soon as he said it, it was just like, I got goosebumps. I was like, oh, yes. That's, that's the it. word. Oh my gosh. That is it so funny. And that's funny because John, and actually my partner helped me name, well, my dad helped me name the spa. And then my fiance helped me name the product line for us too. So it was like, almost like I feel like, cause we're, I'm like you as well, like very creative. So I'm like involved so much in the creativity of the product and the brand, but then it's like coming up with the name is like, it's such a specific thing. And it's like, it can make or break a, a, a brand too. Like how you're going to market it, the name, the feeling, everything behind it. So that's amazing. That's such a cool story. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I think he likes it when I give him credit for that one because it was his word and then so. <laughs> That's amazing. Teamwork, right? That's why you have to find a supportive partner. partner. 
Yeah. Now, what was something, because when you said you were changing, like really niching down into skincare, and this was like before you had even started Linger, like the actual product line itself, with the transition of that, did you have staff members as well that were with you? Or were you a solo entrepreneur at that point? Solo. So the girl that did work for me, um, I've only ever hired once, and it was when I had the babies. Um, And then she... Uh, once I came back, we worked together um, for a short time and then she went and had a baby uh, and she just decided she's still a stay at home mom. She never came. She never went, got back into the workforce. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm honestly, Nicole, there have been so many times where it's been tempting to hire again, but I, I've been solo this whole time. And instead of hiring other estheticians, I try to hire out for absolutely everything else. Yeah. I, um, I feel like that really gives me the freedom um, that I still want to maintain as long as I can. I mean, I do kind of feel this momentum growing with linger where I think eventually I am going to have to hire with linger um but you know I I hire out for bookkeeping accounting um cleaning like anything else that I can you know kind of outsource I do it Mm -hmm. and I find that that really brings a balance into my solo act um so yeah for now it's working I think eventually we'll probably need a linger warehouse right now we're using our house which is kind of comical because <laughs> we kind of have it in all the corners of our house and in the closets and you know so but those are some of the stories right there like you were saying where people think it's an overnight success like I love hearing about like how Nike started, for example, it was like literally in his parents' garage, well, basement, and then it went to their garage. Like we're very much the same with our product line. We don't have like a per se warehouse. We're in like a garage kind of facility where I rent from someone else. And it's all the stages, right? And I, you probably think the same way when you look back to when you had started your spa to where it is now, like all the growing. I love that process and hearing these stories on our podcast of interviewing individuals of like, how they started, where they are, and then almost like re-interviewing them like years later to see how much their businesses have grown. Now is Linger, do you think it'll become something that you will sell? Because you're made in Canada, which I absolutely love that. Is that something that you knew you wanted in your line that it was going to be made in Canada? Or you were kind of going down the rabbit hole of doing all this research and trying to figure out what was the best thing for your brand? I absolutely love this question because the fact that Linger is made in Canada was the top priority Love that. when I do develop. Um, and that actually led to a lot of obstacles. But I am so stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> Once I get this notion in my head, I just dig my heels in and made in Canada was my top priority and at times it got really tempting to go outside of Canada because let's face it way easier um I mean half the amount of money you know like there's all these tempting but at the end of the day I personally try my best to always buy made in Canada products. Like this is something that has been, you know, really important to me for years and years and years. I always check the label, always, always, always to see. Um, So, and made in Canada, uh, you know, it just, I mean, how great is that? To be supporting our economy, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to have these incredibly high quality products developed in your own country that you can purchase online. Like, I mean, I just, yeah, 
it was really important to me. So it did take a little bit of sourcing though. Like even that wasn't overnight. My goodness, the amount of phone calls. Um, and I was Samples, kind of yeah. interviewing different chemists at different labs because I really wanted to feel like the relationship was right. Like it just felt good. And like, I had enough say in what was going on. And so, um, there were a couple of labs here in Ontario that I kind of, kind of sort of started working with. And then I had to pull the plug for different reasons. Cause I was just starting to get, um, no, just like icky vibes. If you mm. I, lack of a better term. Yeah. Definitely. I finally found these, this amazing lab out in British Columbia. Like, so like not exactly convenient, but yes, it's yeah. really amazing how we've been able to, to work it, you know, just with a lot of this, like a lot yep. of Zoom calls and um, like you said, testers back and forth. And it's just been a really beautiful collaboration with these guys. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love is not rushing that process. Like those are going to become your like work colleagues, really that your partners in this development process and to be able to grow it with them for years to come as well. And that's what I love. Like we were making everything overseas and the communication. Yeah. Like even when I look at the, the amount of money on freight now and shipping and all the logistics, I'm like, it really isn't that much less money than manufacturing in Canada now. Like it's right. just gone crazy. And also just like the quality of product, like you're saying, like we're having now conversations with our Canadian distributors here, as well as our manufacturers. And I'm like, this is so much less stress. I don't have to stay up till the middle of the night because the time zone differences. The communication is so much easier. They're on board and they understand what I'm trying, my mission of my product line, which I'm sure you're the same. Like they take so much, um, I think with Canadian manufacturing, they just take so much pride in what they're doing. And I yeah. think finding the right company to work with anyone listening to this podcast too, like it is a process to find those manufacturers. Like it took, it took me almost like a year just to find our manufacturing for like one specific product we needed. And I'm sure yeah. you're the same, like you really have to dive in and, and have those, yeah, those good feelings about them too not just like yeah they're a great re reputable business but at the same time do you enjoy working with them mm -hmm. and another thing that's really important <clears throat> or was to me when I decided to develop in Canada too and that I loved so much about um, the lab that I'm working with now is I mean this is also new to me developing yes. products and menu like this is really a world I didn't know much about and I kind of relied heavily on the lab and my chemists to educate me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I loved about these guys was that they were so um, on the up and up with Health Canada. So yes. all, of, all of our Linger products are Health Canada approved. Like everything is, you know, it's almost like that built um, FDA approved, like they do all that for me. And there's a lot of labs that won't. No, they sub it out or yeah. It's, yeah. That is something like you said, like to actually have product we've had, we've been dealing with health Canada and all the things too. And it, it is tricky. Like you're saying of finding someone who can kind of do it all dot those I's cross those T's within the health Canada, because it, and it changes quite often too, of what is going to be allowed and what isn't, especially because we are dealing with like people's faces. It's a cosmetic world. And then there's even now that fine line between cosmetics as well as drugs. There's all these different ingredients lists that are being changed. But at the same time, I'm like, we're becoming one of the highest standards now, like between European approvals, FDAs, and now Health Canada, we're all kind of within that niche, which I feel like for health, like for um, service providers, especially now selling products like you are to other people, it's like really important to make sure obviously that everything's there. And Health Canada, yeah, if you can get through all those changes and have have a support system with your manufacturers, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I really wanted to know that the products that I was selling to my end user were safe, you know, like that's just so important to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
Now, what are one of the biggest things that you noticed, like when you were diving in to try to find like manufacturers? Now, did you kind of see what you needed in your treatment room and trying to figure out like the best ways for the bottles and applications and that kind of thing? Was that kind of the design of the product, something that you enjoyed doing as well? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been so fun. It's so funny, you know, because it's so grueling. It's so taxing. It's so, it's, it's a lot of work, but Mm -hmm. it's also so fun. And like you said, when you're a creative person, it's just really so rewarding to build a product from the ground up and watch it, you know, evolve into that final packaging where you're finally announcing it to the world and saying I'm selling this now and I made this and Mm. you know it's it's yeah it's really rewarding Mm -hmm. and see being able to hold it in real life like that's what I say to some of our product designers like we have a a pretty crazy team of all like all of our people are kind of spread out and it's fun because I always say that I'm like oh my gosh we're actually physically holding the product in our hands now after it can be up to a year like that's what I think consumers don't understand is like every from barcoding to formulations to bottle applications fulfilling those orders like this thing you have created from your mind it's just yeah. it's just wild to think about it and that there, way. there is so many obstacles along the way of like pumps being weird and not working or uh, I can't even think of all the silly little things it's like oh well this isn't going to work because or like you know the spritz that comes out of your hydration mist it's like oh well I don't like the way this one spritzes so now we have to try this one and it's just that constant trial and error trial and error Mm -hmm. and when you just nail like you get it to that point where you're like yes we've nailed this it's just so rewarding Mm -hmm. so I mean, all of it's been so fun. Um, Naming the products is really fun. But again, with Health Canada, um, there's even so much back and forth with them about what you're even allowed to for products and what you're allowed to put on the labels. Mm -hmm. Descriptions and what they do. Yeah, it's very tricky. Yeah, like it's just been such an educate, fun and educational experience for me. Mm -hmm. from start to finish but it is like you're literally birthing a child when you put a new product out into the world and you hope that everybody loves it as much as you do oh my gosh that's the scariest part like we're launching a couple things later this fall and I'm like oh my gosh this has been like a year in the making what happens if it's a flop right you kind of get into that mindset where you can't go where you're like oh what happens if this goes and I bought all these units and all this time and energy and it doesn't go but I feel like you get to know your consumer well enough as your line starts to grow and people are asking if things are coming in. And like you said, your cleanser is like your best seller. So you know kind of your feedback from your clients and why they love that so much. So what is some of your like biggest advice for people um, who are looking to start a product line? What's something um, that you would say to someone, like even to yourself when you first started, what's something you could have told yourself when you first had that idea? Um, I mean, people aren't really going to like me saying this because I get annoyed when people say this to me too. So the fact that I'm about to say it is kind of. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> but it's truly to be patient. This has been my biggest lesson in my entire life. With like, everything. And I, <laughs> with everything. And maybe that is being a creative and you just want to see like, being a creative person, you just, you do, you want to jump to that end point of yes. like holding that tangible thing in your hand and going, look what I just did. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's really trying to, my advice is to really don't rush it, be patient and enjoy the process. Because if you really just slow down and take a breath, and enjoy each individual step of the process it really just makes it seem not so scary and not so overwhelming like that one day at a time situation because at times it's so stressful it's so stressful at times right but then it's like if you just take a step back and enjoy each step for what it is 
you're you're inevitably going to get to the end. You're not not going to get there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just enjoy the ride. I couldn't agree more. And that's something that I think even entrepreneurs in any stage or whatever industry they're in, I feel like that's very much like that, almost that impulse satisfaction where you like want it now to happen. What I've also noticed too, and I'm sure you feel the exact same way is like when you're, you think this is like the worst thing that could ever happen when something goes wrong. And then you end up surpassing that problem or that situation. You're like, oh, wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought. And that's like what you're saying. I'm sure when like you were dealing with pumps or trying to find manufacturing, I know I was the exact same of like, oh my gosh, this is the worst, worst thing that could happen to our brand. And then now you kind of look back, you're like, wow, I did that. I was mm -hmm. able to, to go past that and now go on to bigger and better things. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And we um we actually have some new products launching this fall as well. Amazing. We've, we've decided to um because the original linger line, like I said, was very spa focused, very botanical, essential oil focused. Um, so we are launching a second tier to the business this fall, which um is a anti-aging medline um oh, so this say. yeah I'm so excited like so much work has gone into this um and it's very different from the original line because we decided to go the route of um fragrance free and essential oil free um, because what's happening now as you know in aesthetics is that now everybody's having um laser treatments, microneedling, deep chemical peels. And mm -hmm. often when you're having these kinds of treatments done, um, essential oils aren't always the best fit for products like for at-home use. So I wanted to make sure that Linger um, had something to offer um, to people that were having these more intense treatments done in spa. That's so, so there's going, yeah, so it's really, um, you know, and it, there, I really found too, over my entire 20 year career, there's a whole group of people that love that aromatic sensory spa experience. And then there's a huge group of people that do not want fragrance or smells of any kind in their product. And that's like, there's fine. Yeah. Yeah, like there's a great divide in the world of you either love it or you don't. Um, so I'm hoping with this um, new anti-aging med line that we've really hit the mark on that. So these products are going to have obviously um, much higher percentages, percentages of actives. Um, there's going to be a vitamin C, a retinol, a mandelic acid exfoliant. Which wow, you've been busy. <laughs> I've been so busy. I took, it's funny because I took a lot of time off this summer, but when I say off. Yeah, air quotes. It, it was from my treatment room so I could focus heavily on this. So there's lots more exciting things to come. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see it all. And I love your packaging, your logo, just everything about the product as well. I just, I feel like it's one of the things where you, you know, as the esthetician or the face expert, skin expert of you knowing what your clients are needing. You're the ones having those meaningful conversations with them. And I am so happy we got to jump on this call today. I feel like our listeners have gotten kind of a little bit of everything from you, like from the spa, the story, even being a mom as well as a beauty entrepreneur, and then growing your line and just seeing where you're going to go. I'm so excited to watch you and, and flourish in this industry. And you're, you, you can totally tell you're using your skincare because your skin's absolutely glowing. Even right now. So <laughs> So thank you so much for spending the time with us today. And I'm excited for everyone to listen to this episode. Where's the best place for people to find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, on Instagram is probably best at Linger Skincare. And you can also find me at um, Diana Patton Skincare as well. Perfect. And we'll put all the links below in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, Diana. This is so much fun. I really appreciate thank you your time so today. Thank you, Nicole, so much. It was a pleasure.